So here's again the situation where you're getting big blocks coming out into this lake. This time they were brought in by a mud flow, a landslide full of mud that carried big blocks with it. And, and it, the mud flow goes from about there where Allison is to about just to the top here. A certain layer here, full of fragments. It must have come in a very high velocity and been deposited all in one day. Whereas those rocks we were looking at as we walked from the car, those were deposited slowly over thousands of years, hundreds of thousands probably. So this was one event. And this is a Precambrian gneiss. It's not Rapakivi. There are no Rapakivis here, but they're all Precambrian. All the blocks are Precambrian. They also could have come from Gold Butte, probably, mm -hmm. but they're not so distinctive. And if you see that mountain up there, that's also a Precambrian block on top of that mountain. So there were huge blocks coming in from, from some direction that isn't the direction that the other sediments came from, because the conglomerates of the car where we parked didn't have Precambrian blocks in them. The rock got fractured later, and that's what made all these white gypsum fractures. So this is very odd. This looks like a glacial deposit, really. Most geologists would think immediately this was deposited by a glacier. Because the blocks are sort of rounded a little bit, like they get in glaciers, and they're completely unsorted from huge to small. Anyone who is just looking at this would say it's a, almost surely a glacier deposit, but it's, it's uh, 30 million, 20 million years old, and there were no glaciers in this part of the world at that time. So. That's not ever discussed. Hmm. It's a it's a sort of a landslide. And if we go back here and look you know, for one layer, it's really hard. It's a big layer here, and it doesn't have. You see, this is this is mud with fragments. This is part of the mud flow, but then from here to there is not mud. There's no fragments, big fragments in it. It's actually sandstone layers. It's sandstone layers like the ones underneath. And this layer got ripped up when this mud flow came. It tore up this layer and bent it and flipped it upside down. Because you can see here in this sandstone layer that it's coarsest at the top. <coughs> You see it. You see it here, best maybe. Here, here it's coarsest at the top and getting finer. The sand grains are coarser up and getting finer down, and that's not the way they usually are. This whole thing has been flipped. So this is sand, and this is a little tiny, or coarse sand and fine sand. But there's no question about it that this is, this bit has been flipped. So there are all kinds of things you can discover in this if you look at these rocks, try to figure out more about how, how they formed and what, what happened. How does mud get so hard? It hardens because water brings in cement that deposits it. Water has dissolved minerals in it, and the groundwater moves through and, mo and leaves some as cement, and all the grains get blocked together, cemented together. Yeah. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you here. Now, we can 